you want to channel here over at Subscribestar now over at Odyssey. Thanks to these 17 new members over there. So BuzzFeed and Vice, what happened to woke SJW media? This is uh, BuzzFeed. Um, the thing is, it just feels like it's done. Like woke media all feels like 2016 energy where maybe... The thing is, there's also a lot more... This All this stuff, like Slate, Salon, Vox, Mike, BuzzFeed, now this, all those 2016 type of vibes. Uh, well, one, there's... I mean, I, 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 you can name like a dozen, but then there's there's hundreds more. And then there's also all these YouTube personalities and personalities spread across Twitter and other forms of social media. And every every new thing that crops up is taking a little bit of market share. Um from that audience so it also feels like i don't know they just they they just cover all the same it's like a um like what are the one of those those magazines they publish like the inquirer type of magazines but for kind of kind of left-wing pop culture um i had a buddy in the 90s who, it seemed like i guess he's gay or something it seemed like all the magazines they had around the house was like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie and Jennifer Lopez, and it just covered all that kind of nonsense. And I looked at him like, why would you be interested in this at all? Anyway, so um, BuzzFeed and Vice kind of feels like normie, boomer, meaningless, Weimar, bread and circuses, distractions for the left-wing crowd who loves the 90s girl power movie. I want to say, what was that movie? I don't know if it was called Clueless. Uh... The movie about the chick who's from Africa, and it's like, uh, Mean Girls? Is that what it's called? I don't know. Alicia Silverstone was in a few of them. That other chick was in uh, Mean Girls. I don't remember the name heard. I think they did a remake, but it was all like non-people who didn't look like they were from the original movie for some reason. Um, So this this feels like, I don't know, it's like just more of the same Jennifer Lopez Brad Pitt, um, who's the other guy who played Batman, the fat man guy, uh, Ben Affleck, Matt Damon stuff from the 90s. It's amazing these people have been around for 30 years and they're still in the fucking news. So um, both companies, Vice and um, BuzzFeed, are shrinking and reducing services as they lose money. And Sir Crap, happy uh, crab dance there. The short answer is these media companies bringing cash from advertising, which means people have to go to the website and be exposed to the ads and sometimes click on them. For both companies and others, Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, with your your girl Taylor Lorenz, and there's a theory about Taylor Lorenz and libs at TikTok. I think a White Rabbit on Odyssey was covering it, where um, the theory is that it's mutual engagement farming, where it's kind of a glow up on top of a glow up, where both sides are trying to blow up each other's um, social media footprint because they make their money based on their social media footprint for. Um, uh, either their sub stacks or their patrons or PayPal's, all these kind of people donate donate to either one. So they had a they had a meeting the other day, and someone said like in their interview, um, it felt it just felt too scripted, like it was set up for um, for slam dunks where uh, Taylor Lorenz was just asking just saying the stupidest left-wing talking points and she was wearing a mask. It's like 2024, my guy, and um, the lives of TikTok girl was showing her would come back with like slam dunks go like this is a blow job and holy you know or do you want to teach kids about anal sex and hold up her phone and show all this kind of stuff it's like it felt it just didn't feel organic so some people were talking about that and the thing is that's entirely possible because for engagement farming on twitter and for these social media people there's so much money in them and their social media just in being online personalities so you can look at these two people it's like blood sports these people did that on youtube and, and if you said, like, oh, yeah, some of these people behind the scenes are actually just working together, like, I totally believe it, because it's, it's, so, it's all so fake and lighthearted and frivolous. So um, the thing is, people going to these websites have decreased. And I spent hours on Vice yesterday archiving things, and it is obvious why people are not going to these sites anymore, because they're not media sites. Media makes people associate, the word associates something that you cover a story, you try to be unbiased and impartial as, as possible. It's good advice. These media companies don't even have the appearance of trying to be unbiased. It is 100% toxic far left narrative being pushed and you know gavin mcginnis i think started vice with a bunch of other people he eventually sold out and vice at one time was i mean vice is still a known brand uh and it had great name recognition i don't know what it was valued at but it, it at one time it would have been something but it's just the writing is so bad now because it's just all these uh all these participation trophy type of whiny mary sue 
soy people writing these magazines where uh, these these articles where everything is just sounds like it's coming right off a of tumbler there's there's no balance whatsoever everything is just pure globalist propaganda there's nobody at these companies that is as far right as they are far left i don't think there are many people who are that far right at all you'd have to have like andrew anglin and people like him writing half the articles to get some kind of balance and even and the thing is the idea of balance to the SJW kids is inconceivable. It just, it go, they, they really don't believe that there are two sides to a story. They just believe the current thing, whatever it is. Anyway, so the left-wing SJW kids are no longer going to these BuzzFeed, Vice, and others. You can go to Vice and you can search a bunch of hot words um, like hate, white, Nazi, Trump, and you'll get the most insane articles. And there's thousands of these articles on just nonsense that nobody cares about. Where, um, for example, they take a, a pro-European group with a few hundred members, like Patriot Front is out there doing some peaceful assembly, and there's over 500 long, wordy articles about them. It doesn't make sense as a use of a media company's resources because there's just not enough interest in a small group that doesn't do anything other than peacefully assemble. It's um the group is is whether they're organic or not organic, I have no idea, but the media coverage of them is not organic. It's it's way too much oxygen is is focused on a group that just doesn't do anything. Um, or, I mean, just legally and lawfully assembles. It's like, you, you'd think the media would, would respect constitution-protected activity. It's like, you'd be wrong. And the thing is, you search Antifa, and there's like 10% of the articles as there were for Patriot Front. Or um, for Trump, there's, you know, like 3,000 articles on Trump, and then you search Biden, and there's, you know, maybe 500 articles. It only makes sense when you realize that, but, or Saturday Night Live does the same thing. It's like, so it's been four years. You guys going to make fun of uh, Biden and uh, Kamala yet? Like, nope, we're still making fun of Trump. You know, he's not in office. <laughs> you know that, right? And Saturday Night Live d definitely does not know that. So it only makes sense when you realize that BuzzFeed and Vice are narrative con control companies funded by globalist deep pockets like Fink and Soros, Schwab or Rothschilds or their holding companies, you know, BlackRock, State Street, Vanguard, or whatever. And the writers themselves have that glossy-eyed stare of the Kool-Aid cult member. They are true believers. They think everything must be viewed through the um, through the lens. Oh, let me, let me search, do a hot word search. So there's like 2,000 articles on Patriot Front, on, on Vice Media. That, that doesn't make sense at all. There's not, that, there's not that kind of interest in a group that doesn't do anything but march around. Uh, and then you search up Antifa, and it's like, again, there's just almost nothing on them. So they think everything has to be viewed through this lens of uh, blaming the beautiful people of the light like you and I, because they're the useful idiots of a Frankfurt School propaganda machine. They hear things from other bullshit media sources, and they just repeat them. The problem is you're supposed to stop and think about something first and then ask questions. You don't want to have a Pavlovian emotional response. And whenever you have an emotional response to anything, you just go, wait a minute, that's that's Pavlovian. We've got to stop, have a little cognition going on here. And the left wing looks at you in horror. And it's like, only Nazis think about things. And now the thing is, they, um, well, the thing is, the left wing used to be all about questioning everything and sacred cows make the best burgers. But now they believe that the media and government um, is is on their side. And every big major corporation is on their side, and yet they're raging against the machine. They totally trust the globalist narrative, and they have been completely subverted and corrupted in the past, I don't know, 25 years. It's been embarrassing to watch. I went through Vice, and I've been archiving the file keyword hierarchy, which you can you can get on there and help if you wish. It'd be nice. You can uh, find a hot word and then just archive the page format uh, of results as well as the individual articles. I think like 10 people could archive the entire site just for kind of historical purposes to, to say, like, this is what the left-wing bias was. I don't know. I think it's, they've been in business for 10 years, and it looks like they're, they're, about to sh they're shutting down the, the digital online the website format and i guess they're probably just going to stay on youtube and, and just do you know kind of uh video formatting to get those uh, advertising dollars um the thing is the original audience for most of these digital magazines was more balanced pre-2016 when they lost their minds over trump derangement syndrome the uh, participation trophy generation people have been studying why they have such a childish pms emotional reaction to facts and logic 
and normal people just not accepting their silly beliefs. And they usually have anime avatars on Twitter because for soy people, they're programmed what to think. The school and media tells them a narrative and how and 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 not how to think and, and reach your own conclusion. That's why kind of the left can't meme because they don't want put they don't want to put a an argument out there and have you reach your own conclusion because they're terrified. In most cases, you're going to reach the conclusion counter to the the SJW's conclusion because they're wrong. They have bad arguments that don't withstand the open marketplace of ideas. So they have to tell you what to think. That's why they use uh, if you go through and do word counts of their articles. They use a lot of modifying language to label groups as istophobic, and they repeat it throughout the article to the point where it, it gets tiresome, and you, and you notice it's like, wait, you, you keep calling this group istophobic, but you never provide any evidence of it. You're just, everything is conclusion-based. There's no argument. It, they start with conclusion, and they conclude with conclusion. So the... Um, they uh they have this narrative and it's like yeah only Hugo Boss questions the narrative. We always trust the media and government, you know, especially after the past few years. It's like all I can say is I'm glad I didn't trust the media and government, so I don't have a I don't have a case of suddenly. It seems like over the past few years, a lot of people had a case of suddenly. I'm sure that'll work out for them. Uh, and you know, I, well, I better not get into that. But you know, I wonder about those people who 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 are on board that narrative and were taking those those treatments for it. It's like so they have to take that every six months. I mean, like every six months they come out with a new, uh, a new one, a new, you know, a booster to take for these people. So, like, at what? And I know there's sunk cost investment on one hand, but the other hand, you got to be getting nervous. I'm just glad to have uh, have taken zero of those things. Um, anyway, so when people ask them questions about their woke religion or explain that they won't use biologically incorrect pronouns, you know, we believe genders derive from sex, of which there's only two of them, um, and this is all nonsense, the woke commie kids don't know how to respond because they were never taught how to argue politely and, and traditionally. Everything is an emotionally charged existential crisis to them. It's all, you know, first world problems. They can't accept that many people just don't believe in stupid stuff like cultural appropriation. And when we explain it, it's just some Soros-funded globalist anti uh, anti-white propaganda, they lose their minds. Now, oddly enough, I will I, in their in their defense at fair and impartial media, Vice had a thing on um, dreadlocks, which is a, a style of hair. I guess they grow it out, and it I don't know it forms knots or something, um, and they just get destroyed in the in all four interviews. <laughs> the first one is amazing. Um, you just the guy answers the question he just nukes you from orbit ask white people of which um about dreadlocks um cultural progression and this guy uh this guy answers the questions have you worn dreads or this i don't know if this is a chick um and she just she just absolutely nukes him in the response so the thing is they redefine words all the time but they don't accept that we can just do the same uh, for example, European people cannot be istophobic because that is a systemic globalist control term used to dehumanize European people. The people of the light, us, are the marginalized and oppressed, and the oppressed can't be the oppressor. It's kind of like a, a circular argument. You go, I feel we are the oppressed, and thus the oppressed can't be the oppressor. And their only counter to that is another circular argument. And you go, well, I guess we're at an impasse. We just will have to agree to disagree. You got to be like passive aggressive with them, you know, s polite. Um, to a fault like we'll just have to agree to disagree I feel one way you feel you feel another way that's the wonderful thing about diversity of thought and they look at you it's like they know they're getting the steam is coming out of their ears because that's not the response they wanted um, but you can have so much fun on Twitter doing this to be fair you will get kicked off Twitter every few months uh, I'm the example of that um, the thing is, the fact that BuzzFeed and the rest can write these anti-white articles is literally proof that we are the disenfranchised and degraded by these systems of globalist supremacy and an anti-white system controlled by these lizard people. And no, nobody owns a hairstyle. That's just dumb. Dreadlocks and braids have been all around the world forever. Um, braids, is, I think, was I, I guarantee you was in a European thing before any other culture knew about it. Um, and dreadlocks is just what uncombed hair. It's like, well, I'm pretty sure anyone on, you know, hunter gatherer culture probably had dreadlocks at some point. So the thing is, uh, when you give them an appeal to emotion counter argument, they don't know what to do because logically once people are both accepting an appeal to emotion, well, the whole argument becomes nonsensical. 
because there is no logic-based solution in an emotionally-based argument. So they do this appeal to emotion thing, and then you and they're expecting you to come back with logic, and you come back with um, an appeal to emotion, and then suddenly they don't know what to do, and they want to go back to a logic-based argument. You go, wait a minute, I feel, I feel you're wrong. I feel this is true. And it's like, why do you feel that way? And then you just, you just, you just keep going along this nonsensical feelings-based argument. And it's like, well, there's how do you reach a, a, a? There's no consensus with that. Like that's what diversity of thought is. We're not a monolith. You don't want everyone to just be a just be a, a completely mixed up, no independent thought whatsoever, right? <laughs> and then, I feel this is, no, 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 I feel that you're oppressing me. I mean, you can, you can just go, if you have the patience with them and you can keep a straight face and keep an even tone, you can just go back and forth with, with them until they uh, eventually will break down and have an ad hominem. But you can kind of take the wind out of their sails. You go at the start, you go, okay, let's have a polite discussion without any ad hominems or uh, straw man arguments. And it's like, now they know they're in trouble because they were never, they never, never taught how to do that. And, and, and when they, they, they want to reach for an ad hominem so desperately, you can feel it across the keyboard or you can see it in person. And, um, like you will see, you will see their faces get redder and redder when they, when they know they can't reach for a personal attack. It's, it's friggin', it, I mean, it can be a lot of fun to troll people, but you know, you're going to need your pepper spray handy because these people can get, can get very feisty anyway. Um, so vice and Buzzfeed are having, I don't, yeah, I don't get the appeal to dreadlocks, but whatever. I'm, uh, I go for the, the shaved head myself, but, um, <laughs> so these, they ask all these questions and all the people answer them, just tell them to go eat a bag of dicks. But it's um it's just a nonsense article. It's like you're not asking anything seriously. You're not asking anything. Uh, a series of questions, the exact same questions, to get a fair balance. It's just a fun article, and I mean, fun articles to make a business model on that. I think you need something more than that. The thing is, Vice used to do like the warlords of Liberia and and like African villages that where the whole village was alcoholic. Apparently, that's on YouTube. That's fascinating. Where they they brew their own, I don't know, whiskey or something. And so the whole village has a drinking problem because they all drink whiskey all the time and they're just stumbling around drunk. It's friggin' bizarre. Um, but they used to do, they used to try to do, like, go there and do these National Geographic type of uh, articles. And then it just became all all um, focusing on the right wing and, and straw manning everyone is everyone's a fascist and Trump's a fascist and Patriot Front and all these right wing groups and it, it just like there's not enough interest in in groups like these these small right wing groups um, for 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 to to have a magazine about so you gotta can you cover the left side and they look at you go there but the left wing aren't doing anything they they have the straw man argument where they go Antifa they're fighting the fascists and you go those are just words <laughs> isn't it those are just where you're labeling the people you don't like as fascists so you can do violence to them. It's like, couldn't you just label them uh, anti for the communists so people could do violence to them? Because there was that actually that Middle Eastern country that did just delete 30,000 communists. So, you know, it's like, no, no, our words are correct. We call ourselves the anti bad guy league so we can do violence. It's like, you know, people are going to return the favor, right? Anyway, uh, like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you guys all next episode.